All right, let's get a look. Take a look at the anatomy of the beast. Now that I get all the covers off. And the covers, by the way, are gonna be nice pieces of sheet metal to hang on to for projects. Um, I don't have a, a break or anything like that, but I might be able to uh, still find a way to bend those into something I can use or weld them together into something. Anyways, uh, getting back to the unit, we've got, uh, of course, the big scrap money is right here. We've got this huge transformer unit in the front here. It's got, looks like it's got multiple cores, three cores in the back. But this is all actually held together by these, what look like uh, these windings. And so I think that might come out as a complete unit once I get down to that point. Um, that, this just looks like a board with the connections, terminal board. So there's not much going on down the bottom here. We've got this other transformer here. That might be a control transformer or a choke, not sure. Got another transformer right here. Same thing with that, it might be a control transformer. Um, not positive. That is a big inductor. I mean, that that's a big sucker right there. That might be brass. Uh, let's see, we got a lot of wiring couple wiring in here that we'll be able to take out. This funny looking orange thing right here, this is called a uh, selenium rectifier. And uh, that was one of the first big uh, advances back uh, when they were making these welders was when they invented the selenium rectifier that gave them a, uh, a, a diode, something that could change the AC into DC uh, that was reliable. They had a really good uh, uh, high reliability out of these things. Um, in the early days of TVs they used selenium rectifiers and you used to be able to tell when you walked into a house that had a, you know, back in the days when they did house calls for TV repair, you could walk into a house, this is before my time but this is what my teacher told me, you could walk into a house and just tell You'd smell this rotten egg uh, sulfur smell, I believe, was what he described it to smell like. And that meant that the selenium rectifier in that TV set had fried. Anyways, so we got a big selenium rectifier right here. This device right here is actually on the back of the shaft, which is the amperage control. Okay. This is actually called a rheostat. Properly, that would be called a rheostat, not a potentiometer. And what this is, is this is a wire wound variable resistor. And let's see, this board right here is where all the contacts are for the range control. So when I activate this range control, you can see it's actually gonna move that disc and it's gonna select different taps on the transformer to get the different current ranges. Not much to see here, just some switches. Um, that's another switch there. Some receptacles in the front. Here's another look at that inductor from the other side. That's an air wound inductor, meaning there's no core in the middle, it's just wide open. And I do believe that is brass, but get a better look at it when we take it out. Uh, now over here, this is interesting. We've got this block right here. It's a plastic cover. And there's a terminal board, terminal strip right there, and a whole lot of wires coming up inside here. So we've got something going on inside here we're definitely going to want to take a look at. Oh, different size screws for that. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let's get around to the back side here and continue with what I do know. Uh, this is a big cartridge fuse. So this is a uh, big. 5 amp 600 volt. That's interesting. A 5 amp fuse that big. Huh. Alright. Actually says here 6 amp fuse. So somebody must have changed that fuse at one time. And then uh, this right here is just simply a contactor. This could be used for uh, several different things. This could be used on a motor. Uh, 
I believe the one and three quarter right there indicates that the one and three quarter horsepower contactor. Might be wrong about that. Um, but this uh, also says it's two or three phase, so I might be able to use that for something else. Could use that as a uh, starter contactor for uh, a motor, a larger motor on a lathe or something like that. So I'll probably hold on to that. Basically, what this does is it has contacts that close when voltage is applied to the various screws and you've got multiple screws depending on how you want to set it up because it could probably could be set up for 120 volt or 220 volt or whatever um, but that's all that is basically it's they call it a contact basically it's a relay um, these metal plates right here going across these look like they might be aluminum these are what are called heat sinks and what's on these is each one of these plates has two uh, rectifier diodes screwed to it. And actually, it looks like, nope, my mistake. Each, each plate has one diode. So these big things right here that are screwed in, these are uh, stud-mounted rectifiers. These are diodes responsible for changing AC to DC also. Now it's interesting, these look like they would be the typical silicone uh, rectifier, or silicon rectifiers I should say, not silicone, silicon, silicon rectifiers. So looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those that they had to put in, uh, gang them together so they could split the load, um, that's a lot of power going through there. And so you get six diodes in there to do the uh, AC to DC rectification for probably the actual welding unit itself. What else we got? I see another little selenium rectifier right over here. That's probably responsible for, more than likely that's responsible for something in the control circuit. You've got another device right here. I have no idea what that is. It looks like it might be a small capacitor with a resistor across it and get a better look at that when I get it out so now and of course the fan unit nice beefy fan motor if that fan is, motor is good I'm going to keep that fan assembly in case I ever have to replace the one of my other unit so let's uh, let grab a screwdriver and get this cover off all right really wasn't much going on underneath that cover we've got two more relays marked CR1 and CR2 okay and uh, one resistor this is uh, what's called a air core wire wound resistor it's a ceramic core that they wrap wire around to make a uh, resistor that has uh, uh, a high wattage rating and it's also got a looks like an adjustable tap on it so you've got uh, connections at each end of the resistor and then a tap that you loosen the screw and you can adjust the value of the resistor when taken with an ohmmeter between one end and the tap or the other end and the tap so that's interesting all of these little parts like this I'll end up say I'll just throw those all in a box and mark them spare airco parts and may never end up using them but uh, or I don't know maybe if somebody needs them they need parts and I have them and you know because I, I know I could source replacements for these some other way if I had to Well, those diagonal cutters I had got wet one too many times, so I decided to just try lubing them and it didn't work, so I threw them out.
guess it was time for them to go. I bought those from Radio Shack when I was like 16 years old. So, got these. Every one of these connections is a ring terminal, meaning I have to take the screw completely out to get it off. That's so if the screw loosens up, the wire can't fall out. But I'm not going to waste time taking every single one of those screws out. Because I'm only going to get rid of the wiring anyway. 